Good to know you're still with us. Now, the Katsina State Governor, Aminu Masari, has stated that COVID-19 is not an issue for the people of this state as armed bandits continue to unleash terror and mayhem on them. He said over 50 persons have been killed by gunmen in the last two weeks. Now, according to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, the state has recorded 95 coronavirus infection with eight recoveries and eight deaths. Joining us to discuss this is Peter Aigbedion, a security expert. He joins us via Skype. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. And of course, we have Ruan Godia, a special advisor to Katsina State Governor on Higher Education. He joins us via telephone. Thank you for your time on the program. You're most welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Now, over 50 persons, I, I will start with you, uh, Mr. Godia. Over 50 persons have been killed by gunmen in the last two weeks in Katsina. And your governor says this is even more worrying than uh, COVID-19. He says it's not an issue. Why do you think that position, uh, he took that position, considering the whole world is focused on COVID-19? Did you get my question, uh, Mr. Goodyear? Yes, madam. Okay, uh, please go ahead. Actually, you see, the governor is very, very correct in the assertion he made. You, he talked of uh, banditry killing more people than COVID-19. Just in the last two weeks, 10 villages were attacked in Damusa, Dusama, and Safana. About 50 people were killed at that particular time. And then you talk of about 90 people being infected with COVID-19. Now you're talking of 50 killed at a go. In Faskari local government, just this morning, between 9 and 11 a.m., nine people were killed by the bandits, and they cutted away hundreds of cattle. Yesterday, in the same local government, about five people were killed, and the division police officer there was shot twice. He is now receiving treatment in the Federal Medical Center here in Katana. Yesterday night also, another bandit set or gang visited Zandam in the local government. They took hours in that particular community, ravaging a lot of havoc to them, cutting away with cows, sheep, goats, and so on and so forth. In Basari local government, villages of uh, Sekijiki, Goji, Yasori were attacked. Three individuals were also killed. In Damosa, the head of local administration there was kidnapped, coming from his hometown in Sabwa, together with his own child. Now, these are daily occurrences in different parts of Katsina State, especially in eight frontline local governments of Faskari, Sabwa, Dandumi, Jibia. The Musa, Savannah, and Basari local governments. These are prone to attacks every day, every night. So certainly, banditry now is doing more havoc to us in Katsina State than COVID-19. And oh. this season, we're even afraid that people may not be able to go to their farms because the fear of the attack is already inflicted on them. And you're thinking of millions taken away by these people in the name of cows, uh, sheep, and so on and so forth. And then even the ransom that has been paid is in the tune of uh, millions. So economically, this is the havoc we are facing. In terms of loss of lives, this is the havoc we are facing. In terms of social interactions that have been completely cut away or cut off in Katsina State, actually this is situation. So as far, as far as I'm concerned, being a victim of banditry where I was kidnapped also, sometimes last year, I can tell you, banditry in Katsina State is doing more havoc and even we find ourselves in a sort of confusion. Are we actually having a federal government whose mandate constitutionally, as far as the 99 constitution, is the fact of uh, defending and protecting lives and properties? Here we are in Katsina State, the president is from here, but communities in the state are facing these dangers day in, day out, day in, night in, night out. No pronouncement you can see has been made by the armed forces. Just a day last day or, or a, a day yesterday or, or the day before a team of federal i mean of the armed defense headquarters was in the state government with the governor telling him that they are there to let him know that they are aware what kind of thing is this if you are aware 
what effort have you been making in ensuring that uh, less of properties of people are being protected in Katsina State? So I wonder what kind of government we are having of democracy that cannot depend the lives and properties of some people. In fact, we can say we are losing any feeling of government or governance in Nigeria as far as the federal government is concerned. All right, we'll come level, back to you, uh, Mr. Suffering. Godia. Well, we'll come yes. back to you in a bit. Let's bring in Mr. Aibedion. Um, do you agree with the reason for the statement by the governor, as explained by the special advisor? Oh, oh absolutely, absolutely. And, and even without um, hearing his, his position, and especially him having been a victim of kidnapping by the bandits before, I mean, just common sense will tell you, yesterday evening, the NCDC numbers for coronavirus in Nigeria was um, confirmed cases 3,145, with some um, 103 confirmed fatalities, that's deaths. Then if you're hearing that over the course of two weeks from the governor that over 50 people have died, it tells you that evidently that they face a more grave threat from current, from, from armed banditry than from coronavirus. Besides, I mean, just common sense will tell you that um, the recovery rates for coronavirus, even from WHO records that we're seeing across the world, the world meter, um, it shows that the fatality rate for coronavirus is between two to four percent at most of people who have the disease um so i mean what are the chances what what, what are the recovery rates for gunshots i mean people who are attacked by gun by guns by armed bandits who are trained to kill who are who have shown a, a propensity for bloodletting for violence of the i mean at the most base and the most wicked ways possible so um, it's clear i mean even 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 the novice in, in the game of security or worker security would know that what the governor said is correct, that they face a graver, more more present threat from armed banditry than from coronavirus, sadly. Okay. Do, do you then agree with his thoughts that um, coronavirus is given too much attention and that attention is distracting from other major issues? It, 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 is, it is possible. I, I mean, first of all, um, uh, all hands, just even just even take the national lockdown that we were supposed to be in place, um, that has been eased off in certain states. Um, we've seen that a lot of our security agencies have been deployed across board, and I, I, I believe they are overstretched um, in comparison to the population of this country, uh, even even the states that we have. So if they are spread out, that thinly across across the country to enforce lockdown to help with um, the, um, this this I mean. Security of lives of property. It tells you evidently that um, we are it's not a pretty situation for anybody. And I, my heart goes out to the people of Kassina states who who have been subjected to this. So coronavirus, yes, government's focusing on coronavirus, but it is possible that they have dropped the ball on security. I mean, if you look, let's look, let's look for for example, and go state when the when, when some armed, some armed boys were going about, uh, one million boys or what, what they were called, were going about in, in parts of Lagos, it took a considerable effort for the state government and security forces to nip that in the bud. So if they hadn't risen to the challenge, then that would have made Lagos a more a more insecure place to be. So it's possible that the government has dropped the ball. Let me say that way. I think so. All right, let's come back to you, uh, Mr. Godia. The the situation, according to um, your governor, has become so overwhelming. Um, his words, paraphrased, is that uh, the state is running out of words, the government is running out of words to convince uh, the people that they are on top of the situation. Now, my question is, what kind of assistance should the federal government provide at this time? And uh, there is talk about uh, the uh, government, uh, governor's uh, comment being defeatist as well. Well, we'll get to that part of the question let's just ask your reaction as to what government federal government should be doing to assist the state at this time you see since since 2015 the government in katana state has been doing practically everything possible to contain this situation in fact to the extent that we went in fact with the governor to the forest to a kind of a dialogue with them to broker peace but because there is no support from the federal government, that one could not actually yield a result. And currently, we are asking ourselves, where is the military intelligence? Where is the police intelligence? Where is the DSS? Where is the NIA? These kingpins talking about the leaders of the uh, bandits are known. 
Their stations are known. They keep on coming in. What are they doing to get them? And that's what, I'm, asking, do that's what I'm asking you, sir. I'm looking, well, let's look at a bit for solutions. Like, what in specific terms do you think the federal government can do to assist the state at this time to make sure that this can be managed somewhat, even in the uh, crisis that we are facing as well, the pandemic? One, we need serious synergy of the intelligence of all the, these agencies. Two, we need physical manpower in terms of the military. In terms of the police, we need gadgets, we need technology to be able to contain this situation. Because there is nothing, the governor has no authority, the governor has no resources, he cannot command any of the armed forces. It is the commander in chief that should do that. Where is the commander in chief? We need, in practical terms, the support and the physical action of the federal government, especially the armed forces, to contain this situation. Otherwise, in the next six months, we don't know where these eight local governments in Kansas will be. We may not have anybody there because people are now afraid they have been running to the uh, towns, to the cities for, uh, for, for, for safety. And now most of them are overstretched. Nothing to eat, nowhere to go. So with this fear, with this trauma, you expect that everything in terms of uh, development, education, economy, nothing will work in this local government. So the federal government should take actions clear term actions, practical actions to contain the situation. We right, are tired so of calling second... the police, calling the military to uh, distress calls, but nothing will follow up in terms of addressing this situation physically. All right, to the second part of my question, there's talk about the governor's uh, comment being a defeatist and not um, in, in good light for the people who are looking up to him uh, for leadership. What's your reaction to that? You see, my governor is very, very sincere. My governor is straightforward. He doesn't mince words in saying the truth. In fact, I said it at the chairman of the coalition sometimes last year, that the government, the federal government specifically has failed in protecting lives and properties in Katsina State. I repeat, the federal government has failed in protecting lives and properties in Katsina State, especially in these eight local governments. So the clear terms is the fact that governor has said it all. He cannot do anything more than he has been doing since 2015 when he came into power. His hands Sorry, are tired, his resources Jake. are finished, his patience is exhausted, he cannot do anything. The federal government should come in and do something. Uh, I'm sorry to interject, but we need to get uh, Mr. Agbidion to speak quickly before we wrap up. Uh, my question to you, um, Mr. Agbidion, in spite of how he may sound to some people, the governor seems to be doing something about addressing the matter. From providing support to the security agencies to brokering peace with some bandits, and they say they've repented, they thought that even though that they have repented, they seem to have been overpowered by those who are unrepentant, whom he says are more sophisticated. If you could give us your thoughts on this in about uh, uh, 30 seconds, I'll be very appreciative. Thank you. Well, um, I, it's not surprising that um, the governor is in the situation that he is in. Evidently, he's not receiving the support that he should from the center. And it, it brings it to a question, the, the, the agitation for restructuring in Nigeria. Clearly, 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 um, the state has been left to its devices. People are people will suffer unnecessarily from, from the unwillingness or I think that's what the unwillingness of the government to do what is right. So, yes, people are going to suffer as a result of what we're seeing now. The government is unwilling to do what he's doing. The governor is doing his best, given the circumstances and given the way our constitution is, 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 um, is in place. But there are certain things he can do. He has, oh, he has a lot of limits. And the federal government, the buck falls on the president on the president's table. And sadly, he's from Cassini State. And he should be able to do much more than he has done. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thank you for having us. And Mr. Agudia, thank you as well. Thank you. You're most welcome. All right. And we'll go on a short break for Plots Report. When we come back, I will give my take. Just stay with us. Frontline social critic in Edo State, Comrade Patrick Eholo, has said the government at all levels has failed in its corporate responsibility towards assuring the safety of the COVID-19 pandemic. Comrade Eholo, who is the founder and president of One Law Foundation, believes that with the untold hardship brought about by the lockdown directive, the government should have done more to ease the stress undergone by its citizenry. He made this statement while speaking to Plus TV Africa in Benin City. In, uh 
uh, uh, security vote to governors, the area is going to be over now because we don't have money. What we depend on was oil. Yeah. So this is going to force us now to go back to farming, to go back to back what we used to do, to go back to the granite pyramid, to go back to, you know, we're doing maize, uh, doing cassava, exporting organic food to abroad. So it's only the strong that will survive the time we are. And I know as Nigerians, we are good people. We are strong people. If Nigeria has the courage now to slash this or some of these disgruntled honorables, they are not honorable, some of them, they don't deserve their name honorable, because most of them are very disgruntled. They don't do anything. Why do we pay people a lot of salaries so they don't do anything? Why are you slashing the ordinary people's salary when they don't do anything? He also condemned the action of the government in the distribution of relief items. If the government said they had uh, uh, reach out to people uh, through political measures. How many of those can you confirm? Which area? What, was it done along party line or was it done for every citizen of Edo state? I'm from this area, I've not seen anything. But I also know that I've been to IDP camp. We've not seen them there. I want to go give them some, uh, some food and some other uh, things to help them. I also went to my village at uh, Ovea Northeast to assist them. And I'm not saying they're not doing anything at all, but uh, when they are talking about figure, you know that something's already wrong. I mean, look at what happened with the uh, uh, federal level, where they claim that over a hundred billion was spent in three days. I mean, come on, how did they do that? And then look at how fire got the place because of fraud, so that when well, we're going to turn it to explain to audit for us, then there's no documentation to show. The Abacha loot for me is a clear manifestation of the pitfalls of unbridled greed and a continued reparation for me, a confirmation that there can be some level of accountability for actions by our leaders. In my thinking, the repatriation will be for any leader who truly wants to make a change, a beginning, baby steps if you please, to begin to claw his or her way back from a severe crisis of confidence and corruption. That is my take. I thank you for your time with us tonight. The program returns same time tomorrow. Bye for now.